Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So it's been a long time since I stopped the work on to the 3-in-1 CNC and that's because of some major problem occur into the electronic portion of the machine and uh, to just figure out that problem it took me around two months of research and I'm posting this video specifically for that reason so that if anybody wants to make a CNC like this like 3-in-1 CNC then it would not create that much problem to that person so this part I am only focusing on to the programming and electronic portion the main construction part is going to be shown in a different video in this part I am not going to show you how to fix or install the drivers and other thing into the main board because there are a lot of maker who already did that and uh, i also learned from those guys so i post the link of those videos in the description section so that you can check them but i'm definitely going to do a quick overview of the parts which you can use and uh, which you can't so hopefully that will able to help you in building a cnc like that frankly said just to figure out my problem i spend a, a lot of money in that and i don't want that anyone will do the same because it pains a lot so before jumping to the software section I would like to show you the hardware I'm going to use to build my CNC and uh, first of all here I have Arduino Mega 2560 and this is going to be the main CPU of this whole rig and on to the top I'm going to use this ramp 1.4 board with a couple of stepper motor drivers and these are the first preference when I started to build this machine and these are Polulu A4988 driver and I would suggest you that if you are going to build the machine with NEMA 23 then it's better not to use these drivers because they are not big enough to fulfill the power consumption of those NEMA 23 motors and I'm going to explain more about them in upcoming section of this video next I have the extruder I already assembled this extruder part and it's not going that difficult to assemble all the components of this extruder and you can find a lot of tutorial of assembling these extruders together although some sellers are selling these extruder in pre-assembled state so you can buy them as well if you want then I have a 15 watt laser and this laser module are coming in two types adjustable and non adjustable and uh, the type which I am using in my build is a non adjustable it means the focal length of the laser has been restricted around 18 millimeter the next part is the spindle and in my build I decided to use a 500 watt 36 volt DC spindle so in this video I am not going to show you how to assemble all of these components together but instead of that I am going to show you what the problem you may face and how to encounter those problems so to keep this video as short as possible I'm I'm going to post some links in the description section where you can learn how to properly install this firmware into the Arduino and some other important information regarding the Merlin firmware and these are the guys from where I first learned flashing the Merlin firmware inside the Arduino so I hope it's not difficult for you to learn from them so the main problem occurs during the flashing the firmware in, into the Arduino is that the COM port is not detected by the computer when you insert the USB so I provided a software named COM port driver in the description section down below so you can download it from there and that will surely solve your port related issue so the other problem I got during the installation of extruder is that the motor instead of rotating start to create a humming sound so the basic way to fix this problem is to increase the current setting through the potentiometer which is located onto the top of the driver but in my case the situation is different the wire I receive which connects the motor to the main board having a wrong placement of wire and because of that this motor is unable to rotate so if you have the same problem and increasing the current from the potentiometer didn't work for you then you need to check the wire position and the easy way to check this is to shorten any two wires of the stepper motor and if it's hard to rotate and you are feeling some resistance then those wires 
need to be placed side by side and those wire are coming from same coil and if you are not feeling any resistance during the manual rotation then those belongs to a different coil i don't know how these wire crimped in wrong position but by shorten the two wires i found that the connection is wrong so in this image you can see how all the components need to connect to the main board and there you can see that the wires are shown with a color code but sometimes mistakes happen and if you have that case then alternating the wire position will solve your problem but first of all you need to check the wires either they come from same coil or different and if you want to know much about them then i posted a video in the description section you can learn from that at first i thought that i received a damaged motor and then i ordered a new one but connection cable i received have connectors onto one side but not onto the other side so i attach some wires and check the motor and it's rotating and with the same wire i check that motor to which i am thinking is faulty also starts to rotate and the problem is all done by that wire since it came from the factory i never thought that there is any fault in the wire connection and i buy another motor but the problem is somewhere else but luckily i able to found that and it's not a big deal so in the printer during the heating of the extruder heater if it says that printer is halted during the heating time of extruder heater then there are two ways to fix this problem first if you are using a 12 volt supply then try to increase the voltage around 14 to 15 volts because these supplies came with a potentiometer and you can increase the voltage with that little screw so that will mostly solve the problem but if this thing not solve your problem then you can change your supply to 24 volts since arduino can't able to handle 24 volt supply but ramp can handle so to solve that problem you can remove this little diode which sends a power to the arduino to work and it also helps to lighten the display since arduino is only capable of holding 19 volts so more than that might damage your arduino and if you remove the diode then you need to provide a separate 12 volt supply externally i read that some people are able to run arduino on 24 volt power supply but in my case the arduino fried and i need to buy a separate one because i connected it to the another ramp board whose diode wasn't removed and increasing the voltage also reduces the heat up time taken by the extruder so overall you are saving your time sometime if your mega 2560 doesn't show anything onto the screen i mean there is a no display visible it means that this little voltage regulator got fried up and it's not a big deal to solve this issue you need to replace a 5 volt voltage regulator after having tried these regulators i buy a couple of them to save the future time if any mishappening happens and i put that link in the description section so now come to the main section of this video which is all about step skipping during the printing so this little guy is a 4988 stepper motor driver which is widely used in 3d printers to run nema 17 stepper motors it's not a huge problem for this driver to run these NEMA 17s because they are not consuming too much current and the maximum current required usually lie around 1.7 amps and these drivers are capable of providing maximum of 2 amps of total current but if you are come to the NEMA 23 they can turn the motors but the motor loses its stock because of lack of current flowing through the motor so during the start of this project i didn't know much about these electronics items and uh, when i start to face the problem i read some articles about these component and from thereafter i shift towards the drv8825 stepper driver which is slightly higher model than 4988 but it still lacks the power because it only provide 2.2 amps maximum then i thought that my motor having some issues that's why it's skipping the steps and that idea came in my mind because they are already being used by my previous cnc build so i buy a set of two motors for x and y axis and hoping that my problem is going to be solved but that's not the case again the same problem and 
at this time i was thinking that the lack of current might be the issue of step skipping because i read so many articles onto that so i decided to go with a bigger stepper driver like 6560 or 6600 and uh, these drivers are actually capable of providing 3 amps to each coil so i again switched the driver to tv6560 so like the previous two drivers these drivers have a different way to attach them to the ramp board and uh, these are the little expansion sockets comes in the market which you which will ease your work and uh, you can see that there is some indication written onto the expansion connector and the easy way to remember the installation is that those indications are facing towards the motor points but even then it didn't solve the problem so besides changing the drivers i also changed the ram board from 1.4 to 1.6 but still no luck and during that changing i fried my arduino mega and a display because on the old ramp which is red in color i already removed the diode which sends power to the arduino for display but when i switch to the 1.6 and and connect the 24 volt supply everything gone except that ramp itself so make sure that if you are using a 24 volt power supply with the ram board you need to remove that little diode one thing i forgot to tell you that if you are changing the driver you also need to change the settings in merlin firmware so that it can provide you a better result because each driver have a different settings and different frequency they are working on so if you look down into the configuration tab then you find this area which is related to the drivers and by default it's selected to a 4988 driver and if you take a look onto the top there is a huge list of drivers supported by the merlin firmware and to tell the software that what you are using you need to write the driver name you are using for a particular motor and you can assign different drivers to different motor as well and they all work fine if you want to know much about merlin firmware then you can check the description section but uh, it still didn't solve the problem and here you can see the problem which occurs during all the remaining drivers and also with the 6560 and uh, during the whole setup all the drivers create a huge noise like this one and you can see the result of step skipping Here I was printing a benchy board and as soon as the machine start to print it create a humming sound and start to skipping the steps. The print area was not more than 2 inches but you can see that the machine is wandering all over the entire bed and forget what to do. Sometime I also thought that there might be some mechanical issue regarding the alignment of ball screw and I realign it 4 times during this whole chaos of 2 months but still no luck. Then I post in a forum about this topic and come to know about the Duet Wi-Fi board which is capable of providing 4 amps of current. Even at this stage I thought it's all about the current and Duet uses a Tranomic stepper driver and you can either buy an individual stepper driver and uses them onto your RAM board like 4988 or either you can go with the board in which these drivers are already been installed and in the market there is a huge list of drivers with these boards which you can buy but the problem is that these drivers are not that cheap and i need to take a decision whether to buy individual driver or a board and i go with the board because do it have tons of option for expansion like you can use a multicolor extruder with with it as many as you want and in the hope that it will surely solve my problem because someone told me that so i decided to invest my money into do it wi-fi board but it is very expensive board but you can go with the clone version of duet that also works very well i also buy a touch screen with that board so again after hooking this board with the machine i am still facing the step skipping problem and it was really hard to believe that even investing so much amount of money into the board that's still not solving my issue every day i made some prints and failed and then changed the settings then made the print and then again failed 
and I repeated this thing I think maybe around one and a half month continuously and every day I did something onto this machine but not able to succeed in what I want to achieve but the thing is that during all these experiments if I run the machine to a very low speed like 10 millimeter per second feed rate then there would be no problem and machine works fine and this thing happens in all of the drivers after that i kept my research onto the problem then i found a forum onto the duet website the problem which is induced by the emf of the stepper motors and i thought that it might be the reason why my motor skipping the steps and it's pretty easy way to find this first of all you need to visit a riprap firmware.org the link is in the description and onto that page there is an option of emf calculator when you open that page you will find some option where you need to fill out your requirements and your motor properties so printer geometry doesn't play an important role the next part we have is the power supply since in my case i am using a 24 volt power supply so i put a 24 then the next part is the motor current which you want to set into your firmware usually motor current need to be set around 85 to 90 percent of the rated current so i put it 2400 milliampere the next i have is the requested maximum speed and in this case i'm going to go with 100 millimeter per second and you can go with whatever speed you wanted to go and uh, the next step is how many motors are connected into series since i am using a duet wi-fi board and there is an option to connect two motors simultaneously onto z-axis so i set the parameter to two then we come to the motor properties and uh, if you visit the website from where you buy these motors then onto the website page you can find the specification about your motor since there are only neiman 17 motors has been displayed in the chart and my motor was not listed here so i choose a custom option then in the next step there is a step angle in my case i have 1.8 degree of step from there after we have a holding torque and in and my motor is capable of 189 newton centimeter torque the next i have the rated current and i set it to 2800 milliamps according to the motor specs then we have a phase resistance and phase inductance and these can be find onto the motor spec page now down below is the main part with which you are able to find the solution so in the drive section first option is about micro stepping usually micro stepping is kept around 16 times but since trinamic is capable of providing 256 times the steps you can set it up to that but one thing you need to take care of is that more the micro stepping has been increased the steps also need to be increased you can say that these are directly proportional to each other if you double the micro stepping the steps also need to be doubled up the next option we have is about driven option in my machine i am using a ball screw to rotate my x y and z axis so i choose a lead screw in that option the next option is that the lead screw preset if you are using a lead screw which is listed in this list then you can select that particular ball screw but otherwise in the lead screw lead option which is the next one you can just directly put the lead your ball screw has since my ball screw have a lead of 4 millimeter so i put 4 in the lead screw option since i am using a direct drive so i am going to put the gear ratio 1 is to 1 in the next step the steps has been calculated automatically by all of your specs we filled earlier so now the setting i have filled in this page it provide me the value regarding the emf produced by the motors if you take a closer look into the back emf section down below then you will find emf induced due to rotation and due to inductance and this is the portion onto which we need to pay some attention since these values are came for single motor and uh, if i am using four motors in my 3d printer then the total emf came around 300 volt and uh, to counter that emf force i need a supply of more than 300 volts and there is no way that i am able to provide that much voltage to my duet board because it can't handle that much voltage 
the overall conclusion is that if we increase the lead screw lead then the emf is going to decrease so you can say that the emf is inversely proportional to the lead of the lead screw and here if i change the lead from 4 millimeter to 20 millimeter then you will see that how much amount of emf has been reduced and in the bottom section the required speed also increases from 11 to 56 millimeter per second if i increases the lead from 20 to 50 millimeter then you will see that the emf come around 5.4 volts and a 24 volt power supply with four motors can handle this amount of emf and on to the right side if you take a closer look then you will see that by increasing the lead the motor needs to take less rotation and the step will also reduce to around 64 steps which in first case was around 800 since i don't have a ball screw having that much lead but i want to use ball screw for my design and to counter my problem i come to know about igus ball screw and these screws are capable of providing this much amount of lead in single rotation but the problem is that they are way too much expensive and i don't want to invest this much amount of money into this project and if you want to know much about these iga screw then the link is in the description section so i decided to go with a belt driven method for that i choose a 28 teeth timing pulley and with the lead of 5 millimeter and when i put this data onto the page i found a huge reduction of emf and uh, the speed is also increased because 28 teeth multiplied by that pitch which is around 5 millimeter gives a lead of 140 millimeter which is extremely huge and because of that the velocity has been increased to around 400 millimeter per second it means that every time my stepper motor takes one revolution the machine will move around 140 millimeter and in the earlier case when i am going to use the ball screw having a lead of 4 millimeter then with the every single complete revolution of motor it give me a lead of 4 millimeter only so here you can see that there is a huge difference between both the cases and uh, there are definitely a lot of ways to increase the lead of the ball screw but i'm not going to show that method in this series of cnc i think i'm going to create a different video over that topic in much brief so after getting these calculation i am dead sure that i finally found the solution to my problem so after doing so much research about the ball screw and belt i finally choose the belt and uh, it's definitely not going to provide that much torque but for now i can manage with this belt system although the torque is powerful enough for routing purpose but i wanted to use a ball screw in this machine for much higher torque so during the start of this project i thought that everything goes very well but that never happened and i think if i never encountered those problem i am never able to learn anything but now everything works flawlessly and the main building process i am going to show you in the next video which is going to be come in the upcoming week stay tuned for the next video and i catch you in the next one till then have a great day